We're sending our good vibes out and support to King Charles, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Now, Charles reportedly called his son Harry to let him know before it went public. So Harry is now, I guess, on his way back to see his dad. I mean, I, I hope that will help his prognosis because sometimes yeah. less stress can help. But uh, this is, uh, this is, I Poor think... Charles. He I waited so long. So long. I mean, the woman was in, in the position for 70 years, yeah. you know, and uh, the longest reign. I think that she could have used some term limits. <laughs> she was because... There for a long. She was there for a <laughs> you long You know what time. I mean? It's like, why not step down and let Charles have stay in the sun? The poor guy, he finally gets to be king, and now he has an illness. It doesn't seem fair. Bad. There's something wrong about it. I'm glad she, to see the families coming back, though. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, Harry's coming to visit. I think it's important when there's a crisis for people mm -hmm. to come together if they can. And it looks Unless like they so hate each other. There are families like that that yeah. hate each other so much. Yeah, but sometimes and, this can be the kicker when someone gets ill or gets yeah. close. Sometimes this can be the one thing that pulls everyone And we, yeah. I mean, I read Spare. I, I actually listened to, to it. And, um, you know, I think Harry's in a lot of pain because of this breakup with his family yeah. and this, this rift with his family. And so if this brings him closer to his father, I think that's sort of the silver lining in it. But King Charles has only been in the job for 18 months, and he is so much more progressive, I think, yeah. than, his, than the queen was. And um, he was giving this wow. speech about climate change. You know, he's meeting with politicians. So it's, it's just a terrible thing that he's not going to be able to continue doing some of that right now. But I think his prognosis is pretty good. Yeah. I, you hope. I was reading. We'll see. We're hopeful. Well, well and I think it's just a good reminder that life is fleeting for all of us. That's like the one joint thing we all share. And to, if you have loved ones you're distant from, it is worth reaching out and making the time to heal because you just never know when that relationship yeah. might be, might not be there and you don't want to leave anything unsaid. And you know what, since we're talking about this, <clears throat> I want to encourage everyone, <clears throat> you don't want to wait till after somebody passes to figure out what they wanted. Yeah. Please, have those talks now. Do not wait until someone is gone and you can't ask them what they want and then you're in the middle of a hellhole. Yeah. You don't want that. Take care of it. It, I, it sounds scary, but I'm telling you, do your kids a favor. Yeah. Do your kids a favor. You know, Save them the hassle of trying to figure out what your needs are. There's, a, there's this thing it. called Swedish death cleanup. Yes. That says that you should clean everything up before you die so you don't yes. leave all this mess to for your yes. kids. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about it is that you should have that health proxy, what should happen to you. All of it. Yeah. Manny just, and I just did that. this, actually, yeah. and it was kind of, I felt that it was going to be morbid and macabre, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I felt great knowing what he wanted, and it was different from what I wanted, and that the kids won't have to deal during we had a grief yeah. with what we, we had want. a full family Zoom death meeting yeah. to go over everything my yeah. parents. That's a fun idea. Do